Most of the comments I receive about FreeBSD on this channel are positive. Some genuinely are questions that await to be answered, and others are, well, for want of a better word, trolling. I received one a week back that I'm not quite sure where it fits, but being the person I am, I'll give this the benefit of the doubt and assume it's a legitimate question. So, Phil states, FreeBSD is cool and secure, but it only works on old hardware configurations, which for the most part no longer benefit from the firmware updates and are therefore materially vulnerable. When the people at FreeBSD make real efforts, like in Linux, to ensure hardware compatibility with newer machines, then we can really compare other operating systems. I'll address the last bit first and the first bit last, because that's the way I roll. The FreeBSD Foundation is a US-based 501c3 registered non-profit organization dedicated to supporting the FreeBSD project, its development, and its community. Funding comes from individual and corporate donations and is used to sponsor developers for specific activities, purchase hardware and network infrastructure, and provide travel grants to develop a summit. The FreeBSD Foundation is able to provide legal representation to sign contracts and agreements on behalf of the FreeBSD project and also holds the FreeBSD trademark and related domain names. The FreeBSD Foundation received its initial 501c3 charity status on December the 7th, 2000, and the foundation was formally announced to the world on June the 27th, 2001. So it's been around for a while, and everything they ultimately do is for the betterment of FreeBSD and the FreeBSD project. It mustn't be confused with the Linux Foundation, which is more of a trade organisation in nature. It's all very confusing to this British YouTuber uh, who's not conversed in the ways of US business and charitable organisations, but it comes down to that the funding for the FreeBSD Foundation comes entirely from donations, and whilst the pot of money may not be endless, it never is, is it? They sponsor some very worthwhile and important advancements in FreeBSD, and even though the FreeBSD project has thousands of volunteer contributors, every now and then, a full-time programmer or developer may be needed to work on specific drivers, and that costs money, and that's where the sponsorship comes in. At the time of this video, there are three ongoing projects in progress, all very important, and one in particular very much requested. And these are Intel Wi-Fi and AO2.11ac drivers, ZSTD integration into OpenZFS, and as Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi support. But if you look at the project page, you can see that there are a lot of other projects that have been completed, all of which result in improvements for us all. So, to answer the last part first, yes, the folks at FreeBSD are making real efforts to ensure hardware compatibility in FreeBSD. You just don't always see it. Next, the bit about FreeBSD working on only on old hardware configurations. Now, I don't have the newest hardware, in fact the newest piece I own is a Raspberry Pi 400 which to be fair is fairly new, but beyond that I have to rely on third party reports of compatibility. But I can say that FreeBSD works perfectly on the Pi 4 and 400, but according to Pharonix it also works brilliantly on Ryzen and that's fairly new too. But if you want to be sure it will work on that, your hardware, then there are a couple of sites you can look at and check. One is the BSD Hardware Checker, which you can compare different hardware components, and the other is to look in the FreeBSD 13.0 Release Hardware Notes, and there you will find component after component listed. It's a very good list indeed. Just before we wrap, I'll mention that Sony and its PlayStation has been using FreeBSD as its base for its consoles since the PlayStation 3, which introduced Blu-ray almost universally into people's homes at a time when the standalone player was more expensive than the console itself. It was running a combination of FreeBSD and NetBSD. The PlayStation 4 continued the FreeBSD connection by basing Orbis OS on FreeBSD 9, and indeed the PlayStation 5 is based upon FreeBSD 12. Well, that's if you can pick one up, that is. As a parting thought, this comment to my channel was probably from a Linux user, but it's not just Linux users who sometimes have the wrong end of the stick. I found an article that ridiculed Linux for having 10 faults that Windows users don't face. And interestingly, the one about peripherals was very familiar. It's not true there, and it's not true here. 
But what is true is that no operating system is perfect, just that there are degrees of imperfection that we are willing to put up with. And for me, what I gain from using FreeBSD outweighs any small inconvenience of not being able to use Wi-Fi on the Pi, etc. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.